fantastic fireside chat. And this is the woman, the woman power, um, having the end with beautiful compliments for a really great job. My compliments, ladies. Thank you so much. We continue the discussion with someone who doesn't need to be introduced. This someone will speak on the uniqueness, importance, and dedicate, dedication in the VC world. Now, this is the someone who doesn't need to be introduced. Hi, I'm Tim Draper from Draper Associates. It's a great honor to be here at Webit. Uh, this is um, so exciting to be speaking to so many great and potentially great entrepreneurs. I'm I'm very pleased, and um, and what I want to what I want to talk to you about today is um, trust and freedom. Um, freedom is so important. The ability to um, operate independent of uh, government interference, the ability to operate and, and build something of great value when you're just getting started, uh, the, the ability to innovate, the ability to have that, um, use your imagination and try new things uh, without too much uh, interference from various governments uh, is so important. And I'll give you one example, uh, freedom, uh, is the difference between uh, North Korea and South Korea. Uh, about 70 years ago, they had a war and, uh, and North Korea was separated from South Korea completely by the demilitarized zone, the DMZ. And North Korea took on government controls and they used Marxist philosophy. They were Marxist-Leninists, they were socialists. And, uh, and the government told everybody what to do. And to this day, they still do. Uh, and, the, and, and the people just do whatever the government tells them to do or else. Uh, South Korea was a capitalistic free market system, open borders, uh, allowed free market activity. And, uh, and South Korea um, uh, had, uh, operated in that um, capitalistic free society, free speech environment. And, uh, and here we are 70 years later. Uh, 70 years later, the average uh, South Korean now makes 460 times what the average North Korean makes. Uh, and that's when accounting for purchasing power. And it's been about three or four generations. The average South Korean is now four inches taller than the average North Korean. That's how important freedom is. The people in North Korea are starving, suffering, uh, all government controlled. They just do whatever the government tells them to do. They don't have any um, uh, freedom to operate. Uh, in, North, in South Korea today, um, it's a free country. People can innovate, they can become entrepreneurs, they can do extraordinary things. Um, and now I wanna go into trust about 70 years ago, again, um, Singapore was one of the poorest countries in the world. Uh, they were the least trusted and, uh, and living in abject poverty. Lee Kuan Yew came in and he built trust in that country one brick at a time. Uh, and, and, and now 70 years later, Singapore is maybe one of the most trusted countries in the world. And they are also one of the richest so trust and freedom are absolutely imperative for the success of any, any society. Um, government controls are, in, they get in the way of progress. They get in the way of building a, an economy. They get in the way of people eating well and living well and, and providing for their families. They get in the way. Um, the best government is a soft touch government. And we all know that. And we as entrepreneurs are now starting to recognize that we can choose the government that's right for us. That's the freest, the best for educating our people, the best for um, uh, building a business and, and employing people and, uh, and, and the freest and most open. 
And I had a wonderful career in venture capital, and I thought it was pretty much uh, accomplished. The uh, I had uh, uh, built this business uh, all around uh, the internet. We I had benefited from the growth of the internet, the change the internet provided, all the entrepreneurs that had done so many great things for the internet, around the internet, and how they transformed all these industries. And, uh, and I thought, well, that's great. Geographic borders are falling. Um, you know, uh, entrepreneurship is everywhere. We have uh, venture capital everywhere. Um, my mission is accomplished. And then all of a sudden there was Bitcoin. And I realized that we were about to go through an anthropological leap, uh, that suddenly economic value could be open, global, transparent. It could um, transcend borders. And, and while the internet opened those borders and allowed us to communicate and do business across those borders, all of a sudden now we had a way of storing value that was not tied to a government, was not tied to a, a, a bank, was not tied to a, an institution that could manipulate it. Uh, suddenly there was Bitcoin and there were only 21 million of them. And it changed everything. Um, many African countries are run by dictators and, and those dictators, when, uh, when somebody builds something of great value, they either take it or they manipulate the currency to make it worth less. So the incentive to create a great entrepreneurial venture in Africa is, is low because if I build something and I, I achieve greatness and I, I um, aggregate a whole bunch of Naira, um, I know that that government is going to reduce the value of the Naira by 50% a year or more. And if that's the case, then what I have no stored value. But if I can run my business and build my business in Bitcoin, I suddenly have the ability to store that value and hold that value. Um, when people say, is Bitcoin volatile? I say, well, wait, one Bitcoin is worth one Bitcoin. Um, it's all these other currencies that are very volatile as they slowly disappear from use. Uh, I believe that once I can buy my groceries, buy my clothes, buy my housing, all in Bitcoin, there will be no reason to hold any uh, fiat currency, any government currency. And I think that is going to be a major change. And that's going to be terrific for Bitcoin. And it's going to be very difficult for central governments. They're going to have to adjust and they're going to have to start thinking of their of their people rather than their own, own uh, specific power over those people. They're going to have to start thinking, hey, what's good for my people? Uh, you know, China made the decision they were going to get rid of Bitcoin. Biggest mistake. All of a sudden, all these um, Chinese entrepreneurs are saying, hey, I got to go somewhere else um, because this is the future. This would be the equivalent of uh, countries saying, we're not going to have the Internet here. Uh, and then they would lose all that economic value that's, that's come over the last 30 or 40 years. So um, I think. Countries are now starting to recognize that there is a new way of operating. There is a new technology. There's new, um, uh, a better, more trusted, and more free currency out there, and that is Bitcoin. Uh, so that has been um, a driving force for me. It has completely redriven my life. I um, I thought maybe I could, you know, relax, retire, whatever. And I realize it is so important because we are about to go through a major anthropological leap. And I believe that um, by funding these entrepreneurs that are going to take us there, that um, that I can help and I can I can potentially accelerate that leap because I believe that we could have a world that uh, where the borders mean almost nothing where um, geographic borders dissolve over time, where we can trade across border, we can operate across border, we can all work together and we'll all be better off. If I 
let me give you an example of why it's important to be able to trade with everyone around the world. If, if I have a house and you have a farm and we don't trade, then I die of starvation and you die of exposure. Uh, multiply that by the 8 billion people who are all interconnected and all a part of this world economy, all helping each other in one way or another. We are all affected by the work of each other and we want everyone to be able to be free to work and operate and innovate and try new things and provide better and better services for their customers because we are their customers. So uh, as those customers, our lives will continue to improve because we're doing trade. We want free trade. We want the ability to trade across borders wherever we are. And that world will lead us to this new um, anthropological leap I've been talking about. And that is a world in which governance is accountable. Uh, they are accountable to customers, to their they're citizens who become customers of theirs. They, they become the people that end up um, uh, uh, paying for their service, paying taxes for, uh, for government service. And governments are going to compete for you. They're going to be competing for who are the great entrepreneurs of the world, who are the um, innovators of the world, who are the hard workers of the world. Where's the money of the world? Where is the um, innovation of the world? That's what governments are going to need. And they're going to do what they can to attract you, those people. And that is a world that is going to be extraordinary. We are going to see better and better governance. We're going to see freer and freer world. We're going to see the ability to move uh, goods and services and move ourselves um, around the world. Uh, in a much more efficient and effective way. So that changes the whole nature of our economy. And it all starts with Bitcoin. Um, this, is, uh, this is a really exciting time. And people ask me, well, what, what's coming? Well, um, here, are the, here are the entrepreneurs that I'm excited about backing. Um, I'm excited to back entrepreneurs that are taking new technologies and applying those new technologies to industries that have gotten um, lazy and uh, where the service that uh, they provide is not uh, good enough for the money they charge. And, uh, and that is a great place for you as an entrepreneur to be. So I'm always looking for the lazy incumbent, the, the monopolistic incumbent who, who has been, you know, living living high on the hog without providing great service. And when I see that, I think there's got to be a great way for an entrepreneur to wedge into that industry. And so as an entrepreneur, look for new technologies and see how they can be applied to your industry. So one of these technologies might be um, Bitcoin, the blockchain, smart contracts, artificial intelligence, uh, databases, or, or uh, big data and machine learning, uh, robotics, surveillance. There are some really interesting technologies that all will um, potentially change all the biggest industries in the world. Uh, <clears throat> and what are those biggest industries? Well, <clears throat> clearly, Bitcoin is transforming banking. Uh, <clears throat> but I think it's also going to transform commerce and finance. I look for a moment when I, as a venture capitalist, have the ability to raise a fund completely in Bitcoin, invest that money all in Bitcoin, and have my um, entrepreneurs pay their employees and suppliers all in Bitcoin, and have the entire thing be a, a closed uh, loop so that uh, if the entrepreneur uh, has some exit event, then that money in Bitcoin would, uh, would fall into my LP's uh, wallets and, uh, and the, the whole waterfall would be taken care of without any accounting, without any legal, without any bookkeeping, auditing, transfer agents, whatever, it's all done inside this walled garden of Bitcoin. 
Um, I think finance, that is going to change finance as we know it. I think that's going to be an extraordinary time that we're going into. Um, healthcare is also changing because of um, people being able to use data for uh, both diagnostics and therapeutics, where um, the company like Cloud Medics can, can uh, do a better job than the average doctor of uh, uh, analyzing and diagnosing you. And uh, companies like Verge Genomics and Atomwise have the ability to use data to figure out what drug would be the, the most effective drug for any given disease. Uh, I also think government's going to change. Uh, they're going to change from within or they're going to be overthrown. And, uh, and I think you're going to see some extraordinary things happen over the next five or 10 years where um, some governments are going to pull back and say, no, I have to hold on to it the way I, I, it is because I like my power. And some governments are going to say, what's the best thing for my people? It's to uh, make Bitcoin a national currency. It's to uh, encourage more entrepreneurship. It's to de um, to uh, deregulate, to make um, uh, it easier for an entrepreneur to innovate and try new things. Uh, those are the governments that are going to win for the next 40 to 60 years. And I think that is um, really up to all of us to make sure that that happens and that we have an innovative society around the world. Um, thank you, Webbit, for having me. Uh, I'm so excited to be here. And, uh, and I, I, I love having um, all these people together and doing great things. So um, uh, thank you and uh, have a great day. Meet a lot of people.